Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The School Zone. Well, it's not really going to be a full episode, actually. It's a bit of a tips and tricks video for Fallout 4. I was inspired to make a video about the Pip Boy because of someone who wrote into me through the School Zone website. I talked about taking game suggestions in last week's homeroom announcements, and someone took note of that and used the form on the contact page to do just that. He asked if I could do a video kind of introducing the Pip-Boy and all its features to see if he could sort of digest the whole Pip-Boy concept before he bought the game. So I decided to put this video out first to help him out and anyone else that might stumble on this video wondering what else you can do with the Pip-Boy. I'm not sure if I should shout him out. He didn't say in the submission whether I should or not. Maybe I won't do that on most occasions unless someone specifically says I can use their name or their user handle. But thanks to the person who submitted this idea because I think it'll make a great little video. Now, many veteran Fallout gamers are quite familiar with the functions of the Pip-Boy. But us YouTube gamers have to remember that not everyone playing Fallout 4 is a veteran player like us. There are many beginners out there, and some whose experience with Fallout 4 will be their first introduction to the franchise. So this is mostly aimed at them. However, there are some tips and tricks in this video that I'm sure even the most seasoned veterans might not have realized. Even one little tip that they didn't know might make their adventures in the wasteland that much more enjoyable. So let's get started. Now I use an Xbox One, but I'll translate the buttonage to the PS4 as we go along if you happen to be using that console. I don't know the controls for the PC, but if anyone wants to help others out in the comment section below, by all means. Actually, before we get started, I thought it would be kind of neat to give you a little backstory on the Pip-Boy. In-game, that is. Most of the factoids I feature on the School Zone are real-world facts and trivia, but sometimes it's cool to school some in-game facts too. So the following is all within the canon of the game. So the PIP in Pip-Boy stands for Personal Information Processor. It was invented by Robco Industries, which was a pre-war mega corporation for building computers and robots. It was named after its founder, Robert House, thus Rob, who was one of the main characters actually in Fallout New Vegas. Anyway, the Pip-Boy is like the 1950s version of an Apple Watch. It's basically a gauntlet that you wear on your wrist that's like your personal computer. So most video games just default to an out of character menu screen, but in the Fallout series, you get to sort of stay in character as you look over all your stats and inventory. Pretty cool, actually. Oh, and the boy part of Pip-Boy refers to the mascot of the vault Tech Corporation known as the Vault Boy. Through a joint venture with Robco, the Vault Boy is used to represent activities in many of the Pip-Boy features as well as provide a sort of branding experience. But don't get them confused, the Pip-Boy is your wrist computer and the Vault Boy is just an iconic mascot showing you what's up. Alright, so to bring up your Pip-Boy, you press the B button on an Xbox One or the circle on a PS4. And before we get into it, here's something that uh, even some veterans might not have known. You can actually zoom in on the Pip-Boy by pressing the pause button, the upper left hand button. Doesn't zoom very far. If anyone knows how to zoom in a little farther, leave a comment down in the comment section, but this is as far as I can, I can see it zooms in, but that'll be helpful. Also, if you're curious, if you press the button and hold it, you can actually swing your arm out of the way and maybe see some things that are up ahead, you know, if you wanna check out the environment or just get sort of a uh, free form view of the Pip-Boy in all its glory. <laughs> okay, so let's head back in and I'm gonna zoom in for this little video. Okay, so let me start off by explaining some of the things that we see here. And like I said, these will be tips for mostly beginners, but some little nuggets that, uh, you know, intermediate or experienced players might not have known before. Okay, so we're starting off with our little vault boy in the middle there, and you can see these little bars around him. Those indicate parts of his body where he's either at full health or reduced health. We've got head, shoulders, you know, left side, right side, shoulders and torso, you know, midsection, legs and feet. As you can see, I've taken a tiny amount of damage in my feet area. All the rest of my body is still in perfect health. And you can tell that by a little notch that's been nipped off that bottom bar there, and also from the HP down in the bottom left-hand corner. You can see you've currently got a max of 90, but I'm currently at 84 out of that 90. So I could eat some food or things like that to restore it back up again, but you gotta watch out for radiation. We'll, I'll talk a little bit about that when we get to that section. Okay, in the bottom center area, we've got the level. Currently level one, shows my progress towards level two. Pretty self-explanatory there. And down in the bottom right corner, we've got AP, which stands for action points. 
Action points are what you use for powering up your VATs in combat, and AP can also be drained through running, sprinting, swimming, maybe steadying your scope, things like that. And then uh, the action points can also be restored by some consumables, things like, uh, I think Nuka-Cola does it. And for those who've never played before, VAT stands for vault Tech Assisted Targeting System, which you can use using the, uh, the left button to slow down combat, trigger critical hits, just basically makes the game a lot more fun. But those will use up your action points and those are boosted through various stats and perks and things like that. So, okay. In the middle center area above my name there, we've got a gun that says uh, 18 under a little crosshairs. That's uh, what I'm currently using for a weapon. That's my gun and 18 is the damage it does. The little thing that looks like a helmet stands for the armor chart. And I'm not currently wearing armor, but it'll also show resistances and things like that. I'm wearing the vault jumpsuit, which currently has a small amount of electricity resistance and some radiation resistance, as you can see from the lightning bolt and the biohazard symbol. Okay, so we're gonna scoot over to special. Special, as you can see, stands for strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. Pretty cool that they made a little acronym using the first letter of all your stats as the acronym letters. I actually went over all of these in uh, episode one, so definitely go back and check those out if you want to learn more about what each of these do and uh, why I selected this particular array, as you can see here. We're actually going to come back to this special chart in a minute when we get to the inventory section and I show you some things that can boost stats. But in the meantime, let's head over to perks. Currently only have one perk and that was from a little comic book that I picked up. <laughs> Must have learned how to hit people better by reading uh, Grognak the Barbarian. But uh, yeah, when you start picking up perks, they will show up in this section. And while we're at it, if you press the Y button or the triangle, I believe on the PS4, that will bring up the perk chart. Let's take a look at that real quick. Now I'm gonna do probably a whole video on this once I start actually getting some points to spend, but I wanted you guys to know that this was here and that's how you access it. So let's go back and then head over to our inventory section. Okay, so starting right here, we've got a few different things to look at now. A few new uh, stat items as well. First of all, we'll start at the very bottom of the screen. In the bottom left-hand corner, a thing that looks like a handbag, that's showing your weight. Or actually, it could be one of those uh, old-school lifting anvils, lifting dumbbell anvil things. I'm not sure what they're trying to portray there. But either way, my max is 260. That, I th that might be in pounds. I'm not sure but uh, I've currently used 81 out of that 260 so far. Now, in case I didn't mention it earlier, I did do some uh, sort of exploring around the area in between this episode and the next episode. So in the next episode, we'll go back to where I was in the vault and you'll get to see me escape the vault and reach Sanctuary Hills. Okay, so in the center bottom area there, you see we've got a C with the number 22 beside it. The C stands for caps, which is the currency in Fallout 4. So. That's how you spend money from the C. I think it stands for caps. It could stand for cola from Nuka Cola, but I'm pretty sure it stands for caps. So you can always come to your inventory section, see how much money you've got to spend there. And then of course, in the right area down there, we've got the current weapon I'm looking at, or actually the current weapon I'm using. It won't change unless I equip it. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's take a look at these weapons here. So pistol, fragmentation grenade, pipe pistol, and security baton. Glad I did this early on to keep things kind of simple for you, because as you progress through the game, you're gonna rack up quite a bit of things and it would make the whole experience a lot more cluttered. But anyway, uh, the number in parentheses beside the pistol is how many of those items that I have. So I'm currently packing three 10 millimeter pistols, two fragmentation grenades, and et cetera, et cetera. So that's what that number is. The stats for the item you'll see are actually in the chart on the right. So the 18 there is how much damage it does. And the number below that is how much of that ammo I have, the rate of fire, range, accuracy, weight, etc. So these will all change. And whenever you see pluses and minuses, like that, that's where a change has occurred. So between what's equipped and the fragmentation grenade, for example, there's an increase in damage and an increase in range, decrease in weight, etc. So that's uh, that's kind of helpful. So I'll equip the pipe pistol and you'll see my damage change down the bottom right hand corner to 13 because that's what this damage does. But sometimes this might be actually a, a more useful item because it's got a much better rate of fire. You can see now under rate of fire for the 10 millimeter pistol, there's now a minus. 
but we'll go ahead and go back to the 10 millimeter pistol for now. Okay, let's go over to apparel. Currently wearing the new vault jumpsuit that I picked up in vault 111. Got two wedding rings. I believe one was mine and one I picked up from the wifey. And then I picked up a few other items as I was exploring around some of the uh, houses in Sanctuary Hills. So the vault suit currently gives me a little bit of damage resistance against electricity and radiation, as I mentioned. But some of these other items can actually boost your stats. And that's another little tip some people might not have realized. If we take a look at this chef's hat, for example, see where it says LCK? Beside it, there's a one. That means if I put it on, if I equip it, that means it's gonna boost my luck. So let's take a look at that under stats. We'll go back to special and you can see down here, now there's a plus sign beside luck. That means my luck has been boosted from five to six. <laughs> All right. As goofy as it is to be wearing that chef's hat, I might keep it on because you know, luck, you never know. All right. Same thing goes with this gray suit that I've uh, picked up. This one actually boosts my charisma by two. So if I equip that, head over to the stats, you'll see it went from three to five. And same thing with these eyeglasses. Perception one, now my perception is boosted as well. So although you might look like a, a goofy Clark Kent chef, <laughs> it actually might be worth it for me to walk around. I don't have to look at him in third person. I could just pretend he's not wearing that stuff. All right, but that's that's useful, those little boosts here. And I'm sure other items I pick up along the way will provide bigger boosts. Okay, and then if we get into any radiation zones with electricity, I can always re-equip that as well. All right, let's head over to aid. These are all the uh, food items that I picked up and some drugs and things like that. Most of these things say where it says HP is the amount that it'll heal you, but also the amount of radiation it'll give you. It'll give me six, six rads. But some of these items like drugs you can take, for example, will give you special notes. Like this one slows time. This one's gonna give me some damage resistance. The rad away you can see will erase some of the rads, etc. So, and since we're here now, yeah, yeah, this might be a good place to show you guys that you can actually sort these items. Well, let, let me head back to the weapons to show you guys some sorting features, okay? So, interestingly enough, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see where it says RS inspect, and then in the middle, LS sort. Okay, those are, <laughs> technically, those should be reversed, all right? Because if we're using our thumbs here, the, the right button is the one that you want to click to inspect. And what that does is it brings up sort of a blow up of the item that you're looking at. You can rotate it, twist it, inspect it, all that sort of stuff. All right. And then it gives you some uh, mods that it might have in the case of weapons. Clothing won't have those. And then uh, a little more. So you can kind of get, you know, a better view of what you're actually looking at. Click it again or press the B to exit. And the left stick, which is on the right side of the screen at the bottom there, is what you use to sort. So if I click that, for example, it's now gonna sort by the amount of damage that the weapons do, top being the most, bottom being the least, rate of fire. So the pipe pistol, as I mentioned, has a better rate of fire than the pistol. Range, and I can see now the pistol can shoot farther. Accuracy, pistol has better accuracy. Value, in case I wanna sell anything, and I'll show you that when we get into uh, some of the other items. And then weight, in case I want to drop anything and then back to the default. So now that we know that, let's head over to junk. Well, let me tell you about miscellaneous real quick. So these are sort of the special items. Bobby pins can be used to pick locks. Comic I picked up, mentioned that boosted a stat as well. I'm not sure if I sell these, if, it'll, if I'll lose it. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're permanent. I'm just gonna hold on to them just in case. But uh, now we can head over to junk. All right, so most of these things uh, you might be thinking to yourself, you're going to pick up to try to sell. But if you look on the right side of the screen, you can actually see their component items. You'll see things like steel, plastic, wood, glass, etc. These things actually might be worth keeping when you start getting into mods and construction, different crafting elements in Fallout 4. So before you go and sell all this stuff, uh, it might be worth stashing some of it. It's going to kind of be that balance in between selling and crafting but this might be a good place where you can sort things so i'm gonna sort by value for example we can see up here that cigarette carton actually has a few component items but it is also pretty valuable and then some of these things down the very bottom here 
have almost no value. You can sort by weight in case you need to uh, drop anything really heavy. For example, uh, I think I got a desk fan that's like pretty heavy there. Then we're back to the default. Okay, so I don't currently have any mods. This shows you how much ammo you've got left. So I'll have to conserve if I get a shotgun. Got the most of the 10 millimeter rounds there. And you can sort these two if for whatever reason you'd want to do that. I don't know why you can sort by weight because they all weigh zero. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to move on to the data section. I don't normally bother with stats, but in case you're one of those kind of people, you can always check out all this stuff right here. This section right here will tell you about your current quest. So quests. So here's where it might be useful for you. You can press the left button to sort of hide the summary if you just want to kind of see what's going on there. But uh, <laughs> if you press the left button, you can actually go back and it'll explain to you what you need to be doing in this particular case. Now, the reason that this is also useful is because if you press the X or the square on a PS4, I believe, then it'll take you right to the map and show you where that particular mission is taking place. So search the neighborhood Codsworth, still got to do that. But you can see here, this is where we are. This is Sanctuary. This is Vault 111. And uh, another tip for you, you can actually fast travel from the map section. So if you click on, say, or if you point over Vault 111, you can press the A button here, X on a PS4, and uh, you can uh, fast travel. I could fast travel right back to Vault 111. I think it only works if you're outdoors. I could be wrong. Uh, it might cause you some trouble if you're underground or in a building, so just keep that in mind. Also, if you uh, use the right stick, you can zoom all the way out. You still have to you still have to scroll around. I don't know why they didn't just zoom all the way out for you, but that's as far as I believe you can zoom. Um, but it does zoom in pretty far. We still have that sort of uh, you know monochrome display. I'm actually going to talk about that. that's one of the factoids in the next episode. <laughs> okay. Moving on, got the radio tab here. And while most of you might blow this off, unless you feel like listening to some classic radio, let's see if we can hear anything. All right, might put you to sleep there. Let's see if we can tune into Diamond City Radio. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so most of the time you might or might not have that on, but it's worth checking this radio tab every once in a while because it might pick up on uh, random frequencies as you're wandering through the desert that if you tune into them might give you some clues. So this wouldn't be a tab that you'd want to blow off permanently in the game. Uh, check back on it, you know, every once in a while. Okay, so let's see if we've covered everything. Okay, I think that just about does it. So, so let me show you one last thing that you might or might not have known about. And that is, you can actually turn on the flashlight on your Pip-Boy. See, there you go. Very cool. Now, here's something else you might not have known. You can actually change the color of the flashlight by going into your settings tab. Click on display. And then down here, I've currently got my Pip-Boy set to the same as my HUD here, which is kind of a a nice teal color that's easy on the eyes. But if you wanted to, you could change it to whatever you want. And you can even keep the HUD color different than the Pip-Boy color. So like, let's say for example, you wanted to make your Pip-Boy into like a fluorescent pink, all right? So you'd probably wanna boost the red, reduce the green, there you go. Well, you could really make it glow fuchsia like that. All right, and then we go back to uh, the main screen, you'll see that we now have a pink flashlight. All right, pretty interesting. To be honest, probably white would be the best color for viewing things, so we can change that all the way to white there. And that's gonna be good for exploring dark buildings, exploring underground, things like that. Although, to be honest, we might encounter some areas where there's some glowing green moss or some, you know, something is, uh, the light is changed to violet or something. And in those rare cases, I will actually give you a factoid on which particular color settings 
you could change to sort of counter those frequencies in the color spectrum and make it a little easier to see. For now, I'm just gonna change it back to where I was. Awesome. And then you gotta remember to turn off your <laughs> flashlight when it's not in use so you don't attract enemies. Oh yeah, and there's one last thing I wanted to show you. And if we head over to, in the workshop section, currently don't have any workshops, but on the right side there, gives you some stats about the community. Now, I didn't know at first what happiness was. It says happiness 50, What what is that? But here's a little tip for you. You can actually exit out of your Pip-Boy or go back into your default menu and go down to the help section. If you click on the help section, all of these things are defined here for you. So I went down all the way to where it says workshop settlement happiness. And I read about what exactly that was right there and it answered it for me. So you've got other things like, for example, that's, there you go. So very helpful information. Remember to check that. Don't get lost in the wasteland any more than you need to be. So I hope that helped you guys out. You learned a few things, whether you were a beginner or a veteran. Since you spend so much time with your Pip-Boy in Fallout 4, might as well make it an enjoyable experience for you, right? Another quick shout out to the person who submitted that question. If any of you guys want me to uh, cover anything else while I'm playing the game. <laughs> oh, Clark Kent as a chef, that's hilarious then make sure you head over to uh, the School Zone website, click on the contact tab and submit some game suggestions right there in the submission form. All right, that's gonna do it for today's episode. I don't know how quick of an episode it was, but I'm actually not gonna put up an outro card like I normally do for my videos. If you like what you saw, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe. And if you wanna see more videos like this, head to the video tab of my channel and you can see I'm currently playing some other games too besides Fallout 4. I'm playing some Assassin's Creed Syndicate, playing some Call of Duty, Black Ops 3, and then of course I'll be back uh, next time with another Fallout episode, the one I was gonna put up today. So really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks so much for the support. We'll see you next time on The Schooled Zone. Stay smart.